Automobilista to Near Revolution, Race from Working on Becoming the Revolution and much more, right here, right now. Greetings Rummies and welcome to Rum Rum, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to a regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at rumrum.net. Don't forget our podcast is on once again this Thursday in which we talk about all things sim racing and motorsports. And if Steam asked you to update Assetto Corsa Competizione this week, it's because the developers slightly changed the behavior of the ref limiter so it limits more smoothly, thus avoiding issues in the driving that could even lead to collisions. And while Kunos went small, Reza went big, but not as big as we expect the 1.5.0 to be. Still, check out the newest release candidate because you'll get a glimpse of the 1.5.0 and more. Oh, and according to their Discord, Rennsport closed beta keys are going to start dropping on the 6th of June for those lucky enough. Lucky enough also those who are already enjoying the closed beta of the Crew Motor Fest who got an invite this week. And pre-selling of F123 has also started, but if I were you I would not buy it just yet, as you won't be able to give it back if it's no good, so be wise with your money. Studio 397 have issued an open invitation to everyone who wants to test their newest competition system, which at the moment is still in Alpha Stadium. If you're interested, expect it to crash, erase your data, burn down your house and pee on any plant you may have. Ok, the last two maybe not, but Alpha means they finished a skeleton that will be fleshed out while you test it, so you're in for a ride. Pun intended. If you're willing and able to take the risk, follow the link in the description of the video to submit your details and maybe be one of the chosen. But even if you're not, Studio 397 state they are only a couple of weeks away from releasing it to the public, which is developer language that translates to wait a couple of months for the beta. In a podcast of fellow sim racers, Traxion, a company owned by Motorsport Network with head of studio at KW Studios Jean-Francois Chardon, Monsieur Chardon talked a bit about Race Room, its past and its future, disclosing that the studio has six permanent employees in Sweden and nine freelancers, which if you ask me is a very small group for an endeavor as big as Race Room. They are clearly smaller than Reza. He also disclosed they are working on expanding and just now got somebody to do extensive work in the backend, which is everything that has to do with servers, which is a lot. They are very much aware that the graphic engine is quote unquote showing its age and aware of the unstable backend which as we all know leads to updates sometimes grinding the servers to a halt for a whole day. The missing workforce on the backend also meant the extensive work done on the UI had to be stopped for a while as there were things in the GUI that needed features at the backend. Now that, as we said, they have somebody for the backend, work on the UI is going to continue soon. The same is true for the ranked multiplayer and daily races system which now may be taking speed again. Also, the shop will be redone at some point in the future. One of the points where the graphic engine is showing its age is the day-night cycle. He says they tried implementing that feature but it could not be done because of limitations within the light sources as the game engine they are using right now only accepts two. The change was therefore shelved as there was no way around that limitation and will wait for the next game engine. KW Studios is expanding their headcount though and once they have the needed number of developers they will have a powwow and decide what to do with the game engine. Whether to do a big upgrade and shake it down, write a new one or get one of the engines available on the market. Of which there are more than enough. So contrary to what I discussed in our latest podcast, see the link up there, it seems Race Room still has more than enough mileage to go. 
A funny thing was him saying Race Room was the most secure racing sim with regards to cheating. As if Master Loser had never happened. You know, the guy who proved how easy it is to cheat in sim racing and proved it by racing online with all cheats on. Not that the companies have taken any important and effective steps to block cheating anyway. So in light of that comment, take anything Monsieur Chardon says with a fitting amount of salt. Well, it was to be expected. The sun is shining bright in the northern hemisphere and people are less prone to staying inside. Ask my cats, who I only see when they're hungry or thirsty, if at all. That's why compared to last month, the overall player numbers have dropped by almost 1000 average daily players. On the other hand, compared to last year, there's still over 4000 more average daily players. So yeah, believe the pundits who clickbait you with Sim racing is dying, clutch your pearls! And compared to May 2021, locked down as we all were, we have 12,000 more average daily users. Back to our 2023. All sims show a loss of average users. All sims? No. A small village up there is still fighting the trend. Race room of all possible sims recovers and gets to numbers we haven't seen since March. Guess y'all really wanted to drive that BMW, didn't ya? But as I said, all other sims lose more or less users and we expect this is a trend that may continue during summer in the northern hemisphere. Also, there's more motorsports to be seen than in winter, IndyCar is delivering great races, WEC is packed with people, GT3 races are becoming popular again, Oh yeah, and in F1, Red Bull still wins every race. But I digress. This decrease in users is nothing to worry about as they've dropped to the levels of January or March this year. Still high compared to other years and quite possibly the result of that pesky thing called summer. Hot time, summer in the city. Interesting how things go in circles. Acetec, the computer cooling company, sponsors real life racing teams, notices their hardware is lacking, develops own sim racing hardware, Acetec Sim Sports is born. Then Acetec Sim Sports turns around and partners with the unknown to us Racing Prodigy trademark company to set up a sim racing to racing academy and what they call a E to real league. And I hope the boomer who came up with the name will soon enjoy his pension because boy does that name sound cheesy and very much like bunched up marketing bullshit. Anyway, what Acetec and Racing Prodigy want to do here is set up an academy where sim racers are trained, move up in sim racing and get to real life motorsports. And milking the races and we expect the careers for content while they are at it. While I do sound jaded as this sounds like something one of the many media meetings I've been in my life would come up with, it's still an opportunity for good sim racers hoping to move into motorsports and getting trained in both while they are at it. I just recommend anyone taking that offer to get a very good lawyer and shake down the contract to see what falls. And I cannot recommend it enough knowing how many shady people are in the media business. Registration is open already for the first tournament on iRacing on the 19th of June, see the link in the description, followed by street kart racing, R Factor 2 and race room tournaments in the next months. 15 of the drivers of those tournaments will get to drive radical SR1 cars at the end of October at Atlanta Motorsports Park, including extensive training. A second event of this type is planned for the beginning of 2024 with 35 further drivers. Out of these 50 drivers, Racing Prodigy Trademark will draft some to drive a yet to be set up real life racing league under contract with Racing Prodigy Trademark. As I said, get an effing good lawyer to check those contracts thoroughly. Don't skimp on the cost of that lawyer. 
In line with the rise of European-style open-wheel racing in the US, iRacing has licensed the FIA Formula 4 cars from the almighty FIA, and from the release of the Season 3 this June on, you'll be able to drive FIA F4s in the sim. This of course means the disappearance of the Formula IR04 no surprise here. The press release does only vaguely mention F4 circuits, so don't expect to find all the F4 circuits in iRacing just yet or ever. Also vague is the mention of official iRacing F4 events. I guess they're still finalizing the details. We showed you a preliminary version of it in our video about the SRE 2022, see the link up there, and now it's for everyone to get. Sim racing engineering company Heusingwelt has expanded the range of its software in the brand new Smart Control Live application, which lets you change settings and even complete setting profiles on the run. The race you're in changes from dry to rain, click a button, your rain settings are loaded. You have different settings for all tires and low fuel, click a button, your special setting is loaded. All the input force settings, the output curves, everything you can normally set up in Heusingwelt devices can now be changed during a race with the click or flick of a button. Check the page we've linked in the description for in-depth explanations on how to set up and use this new feature. We're already four races in and things are getting clearer, or something. In the Stock Car Championship, Fabian Ball moves from third to first after Atlanta, moving Alexander Meshkov to second, while Igor Ignatenko moves from fourth to third. Mike van Dorn not only drops from the top 5, but will have to sit out for at least 2 races because of the penalties he's accrued. Their loss is our win though, as he'll be joining us in the commentator booth for those races. This moves Matthias Kiskovacs to 4th from 5th and Jakub Kowalski rises up to 5th from 10th. I like. Things are not clear at all in the stock car championship and the heavy and deserved penalties the organizers have been dishing out won't make it any clearer. Moving on to the Russell Cup, which tomorrow will be at Tor Poznan. After the, as always, exceedingly exciting Norris Ring races, Mark Carol profits from his first and specially second place in the long race and keeps his first place as does Gaspar Mrak with his second overall place. He especially profits from his first place in the long race. But then Domingantar jumps to third from sixth, Carlos Avizanda from seventh to fourth, while Nicolas Poletti somehow keeps his fifth place while everyone around him goes up and down. Things are surely going to change after today's race in the Stock Car Championship at Richmond, as always, 2100 CET, and tomorrow at Tor Poznan, yeah, 2100 CET all over again, in the Russell Cup, in your favorite sim racing channel, us. If you would like to support our channel, which we sure wish you would and can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com romrom. Amongst other perks, becoming a patron will fix your name for posterity like this, but you'll also get to know what we plan and what we're doing and will be able to take part in our decisions. So a big thank you to our patrons. If you're feeling friendly, please consider subscribing. No little padawans of the Brazilian sim, this is not the 1.5.0 you're looking for. Yeah, I know I'm botching the quote and misrepresenting the image, go have the Daleks get me. Reza published the 1.4.8. 1.4.8.0 version as release candidate yesterday night. Well, my night there midday or something. For all of you eager to get your fingers on the latest iteration of it. After a week plagued by expectations of we're releasing today, followed by oh wait, we found a bug, lava, rinse, repeat, we now have a delivery that's pure Reza. Chalk full of changes, a glimpse into the changes coming with the 1.5.0 and some very interesting content. But 
let's start at the beginning because I'm neither Tarantino nor Nolan. First of all, you have to go and search for this install specifically as always by going into Steam, Automobilista 2, Properties and Beta tab, then select Release Candidate from the dropdown. If you choose to do so, you'll feel the changes coming with the 1.5.0 with all these cars and should avoid the Formula USA Gens 1 to 3 as the new physics are only partially implemented there and the cars are rather undrivable. With regards to content, this version delivers Barcelona in its newest version without the much maligned chicane and the Formula Junior and drum roll please the Formula USA 2023, which for sure won't be pulled off the sim as Reza has reached an understanding with IndyCar, making the cars different enough for them not to bust Reza's chops following a fruitful conversation between both companies. With regards to the sim, you can now set a multiplayer race weekend so that any pre-race sessions are done with your car as the only one on the track starting the interaction action only in the race. On mandatory pit stops you can set up a minimum of tires to be changed so that the stop counts as valid. Keeping with pit stops, there is not a recommended tire change strategy anymore as it brought many issues with driver pit stops, the sim not accepting any input or reversing racer input at the last seconds and similar shenanigans. In the physics department, added to the, let's call them 1.5 changes, the tire tread for the F Inter has been updated and there's been some small changes to the user interface. Moving on to the AI, its aggression code has been improved in many ways Reza are not divulging and its behavior while driving has been changed in many small details, like throttle lifting over water puddles where they start to overtake and some others. The details of these and all other changes you can read following the link in the description. Nürburgring 1971, Indianapolis and Azure saw some small changes and detailed corrections. Because the track team are perfectionists and regarding vehicles, now any user liveries override the existing liveries. F Reza and F Ultimate Gen 1 now show the tire compound colors and the McLaren MP44 has a downforce variant. And if you want to know our opinion of the 1.5 changes, these are not going to be as revolutionary and game changing as the 1.4 was, but oh boy do the cars feel even better than on the 1.4. So much so that any pre 1.5 car feels, I don't know how to put it, fakes the wrong word because this being a simulation they're all fakes, but it's the best word I can find. This will be yet another great improvement on the physics of a sim that's got incredible physics already.